this is Life Under the Laundry Pile. Episode 22. Woohoo! I don't, I don't even know what to say That anymore. was so like, freaking yeah, random. That was really random. I mean, I, painful to watch, actually. I, I apologize I looking, for that now. I was looking at her and she like kind of convulsed Woo-hoo! and said, woohoo. <laughs> It was like a little seizure. Ah, uh, uh, I peed a little. I peed a little. Yeah. (laughs) That's okay. Hey, guys. Yeah. So, what's up? Not much. Did you have a good weekend? I did. I did. Crazy busy. Crazy busy. Um, Yeah. I mean, oh my gosh. I don't even know what we're doing these days. It's just, I feel like. It's a blur. It is. My mom comes soon. I'm excited. No, not. As by the excited time you guys hear am. this, she'll have already been. Yeah, here, no, but. I'm. I think I might be more excited yeah. than you are. Yeah, I'm. Poor thing. She was this. <laughs> Aubrey said the other day. I said Nana comes next week, and she says, "Why is she coming now?" And I said, "Well, she didn't get to come, <laughs> so she spends time with me yeah. and not you." Yeah, right. I told her I said, "Come while they're in school, please," <laughs> right. um, because she was supposed to come at Christmas, and it didn't work out. And then my brother, and then yada yada, and so it got pushed and pushed and pushed. So. <laughs> January 28th will be Christmas with Nana. <laughs> and that's okay. Yes. So we're all excited. Because it'll be more relaxed then too. So it's not going to be all the... Like, I like having the company too. Because, right. you know, with Lloyd traveling and all. I mean, you know, it'll be nice. And I have so many projects that I need to get done. So it'll be nice right. to have her here. But I'm just super glad that the kids will be in school. Right. So <laughs> And she'll have time with them and time with you. And that yes. way it's not all just rushing around and trying to right. function. Yep. That's all that's new with me. Yeah. I don't have anything else. I mean, just, you know, chugging along, heading towards summertime. That's about that's about what we hit at this point. We start. That's yeah, that. that's the goal. I mean, yeah. at this point and when I was just talking about that at the bus stop, someone said, How you doing? I'm like, just waiting for summer to hit, man. I mean, honestly. <laughs> I know. Like I, know. I got nothing else to look it's forward like a to. Fast downhill. <laughs> like blur forget at like this forget point. spring break. I mean, can we just skip that and go straight to summer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's funny. I don't I don't know. It's so bad like I still find that uh we're busy. Yeah. Yeah, we are too. Not as busy, thank goodness. Like, all that the Christmas is gone. Right. We don't have that on our to-do list, but there's still just a lot going on. Yeah. Nothing I hate. Right. Nothing that I'm like, ugh, I can't believe we're doing this, but it's still busy, so. Yeah. I just, I, I, it's, it's still busy, but it's not, I find that, you know, it's not, once you take the Christmas equation out of, or take the Christmas out of the equation. Well, there's such a large to-do list that comes with that, so. Yeah, so it's almost like a big sigh of relief once January, you're like, huh. I am doing a little bit of research, so I'm generally, and you know this, I'm not Mm anti-activities, but it's something we kind of avoid because I like the family time at home and everything, but. I agree. We're kind of getting to the point with uh, Jackie that uh, we, he has a lot more energy, then he's getting rid of on a daily basis. Right. We need to find something. So I've been researching that. But there's a big part of me that's like, oh, God, these are, you know, like this is just going to add. Yeah. And I'm happy to root him on. Don't get me wrong. But at the same I'm time, not. I'm like, we're going to have to go to I mean, practice. I'm not. It's not Jackie. I'm just not happy to root any of it. I hate sports. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things I hate that my kids do. But I'm still going to be there for them. But yes. it's like we're going to have to go to, you know, Practices uh, practice. and games. I'm like, and... what is it? A rehearsal? A practice? What do we call this? <laughs> and then, you know, the games and everything. So, but when I asked him, I'm like, buddy, what do you think you want to do? <laughs> like, we need to find you an activity. What do you want to do? He's like, I'd like to really up my patty cake game. And I'm like, I don't think that's, <laughs> I don't think that's a club. Yeah. That was so funny. <laughs> I'd really like to work on my patty cake, but um, he's sweet like that. But he just, that kid has more energy than I can get out of his system every yeah. day. And so I think it messes with, like, his brain, too, because there's just so much going on at any given point in time that he's not exerting this energy. Right. So Did you pick something? Um, You know, there's a couple different things that I've looked at. Soccer, we talked about right, that. Right. Um, the league that you guys do is pretty um, low-key. Yes, they perfect. Take it out. One practice, one game. That's it. Um, a week. I, I want to think period. that maybe even in the summer or springtime they have uh, uh, flag football, which is also fun. Right. He does like football. He does follow that a little bit. Lacrosse seems like it would be a good choice, too. And they're all just... There are the leagues where you devote a lot more time, but, you know, there are also options where it's not terribly expensive. For lazy parents right. like me. Right. I prefer the one week, well, one, and, one a week. And some of it is, you know, I don't want to spend $500 on this either. So right. um, I always thought gymnastics would be really good for him, too, because when I say he has a lot of energy, you've witnessed it. Right. That kid is always 
Um, always moving. I mean, like he can't sit still. He can. He just rolls everywhere. He doesn't walk places. He, <laughs> <laughs> he treats my house like a um. What do they call it when they jump from building to building? Parkour. Is it what? I even know. Spider Man was what I was gonna say. <laughs> it's kind of. Like, it's kind of the same thing. Parkour is like when they like do these fancy leaps and flips and they roll. There's over a word things. for that yeah. shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was just insane. Yeah. I mean, literally, I thought the word was just I insane. could see him doing that later in life. Like, the jumping <laughs> from buildings and so like, on rooftops. You've seen those videos, right, where they, like... Mm, on movies? It's kind of the same thing, but okay. they just do this as an activity, so... There's some crazy people in this world. There is. Holy moly. I, I like think, to stay on the ground. I think my son may be one of them. <laughs> well, his biggest goal is Mount Everest, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe he'll be an explorer. It, it was Mount Rushmore. Okay. But we had to talk about how that could land you in jail. Yeah. So, you yeah. can't climb the nose. Right. It's not like something I think that was his goal. He's like, I want to go straight up their noses. <laughs> let's, see what's, let's see what bugs are in there. So, But, yeah, so I've been researching that, which we'll add a little bit on there. But we have to find a solution for him because I think it's kind of affecting, like, he just can't. Yeah. He's not able to wind down because he's not right. getting rid of that energy. So. Yeah. You can find something for Versus him. my other two kids who are, like, sloths. <laughs> I know, I, hate, I I dread every year about this time when the kids say, can you sign me up for soccer? And I'm like, ugh, ugh. okay. Because I'm not that mom that likes to sit on that sideline. I just am and I'll not. Probably, and I'll probably end I'm up not. signing, I know, me neither. But, and I'll, I'll end up signing all three of them up is what I'll do. Because it's yeah. not really fair to let one of them do it and not the others. So. Well, I was pretty, I'm pretty fortunate. Like, out of the three little kids, Paige, do, Paige is not really that interested. And that is fine with me. So it's just, uh, am yeah, I Yeah, I wouldn't force them. Yeah. No. They don't want to do it. But I think once one of them does it, they're all going to be like, yeah. wait a minute. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So. You know what my biggest irritation with, like, sports like that is? What? Is mm. there has to be a snack. Yes. Oh, it drove me crazy. Yeah. Drove me crazy. Yeah. I'm like, they literally just... There does just, not have to be a snack. Just ran around a field for 45 minutes. They don't need a snack. We had well, breakfast I, I have a dinner. novel idea. Bring your own damn snack. Right, exactly. Like, seriously, I got stuck twice last year. No, four times last right. year because I had two fucking kids. So, of course, there's like, hey, right. she's got two kids. She's got to bring double the snacks. I'm like, can't we just, just agree to either bring your kid a snack or feed them when you get home? I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, there are treats, and don't get me wrong, like the end of the year, if you want to have a pizza party or whatever, but the after, you know, after the games, why does there have to be a snack? Yeah. No, I totally get it. I know. And and unfortunately for us, as you know, we don't do the food dye, so nine times out of ten... You still have to pack your the snack. The snack that was taken was Gatorade. Right. And Cheetos, or Gatorade, and Doritos, or just, I'm thinking, really, where's the water? So, of course, right. what do I bring? I bring water and popcorn. Like, right. I popped popcorn, because... I'm that cheap. And I bagged it up, and I took popcorn, oranges, and water. Right. But I'm like, you know, sorry. I'm not. So, yeah, that makes it difficult, too. But I agree. You don't need a damn snack. I think that's my biggest irritant. Like, I can stay there and cheer you on for 45 minutes on a Saturday morning. Right. It probably would do my ass some good to be forced to get out of the house, you know. But I just, well, yeah, I don't, I don't want to pack snacks. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I know. Ugh. Nor Ugh. do I think they need it. <laughs> No, they don't. What a funny thing to be irritated by. No, I know. Do you ever think that? Like, when you you get irritated by something and you're even like, Jesus, I'm annoying me. Like, that's just, that's really a weird thing to be irritated by. Not really, because everything I do is weird, so (laughs) I don't think, no. A lot of weird shit irritates me. Right. Even Lloyd will look at me and say, that is so weird. Why is that? And I'm like, it just does. Right. I don't know. Like, it just does. I do that sometimes. Like, I'll get, I'm like, why? Why am I bothered by that? But I am. Yeah. Hey, no, no shame in your game. I'm not going to downplay the validity of my irritation. It's there, but it's stupid. Like, I have to get over it. <laughs> it's okay. Right. It'll be fine. They're just orange slices, Copper. No, I mean, it's okay. It'll be fine if you're irritated about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. What else do we want to talk about? I don't know. We talked about the show. It's been kind of slow lately. Yeah, it has been. Which is nice. I'm not, not complaining at all. I am slowly learning. Uh, did, did I tell anybody I got a sewing machine and a, and yes, a cameo? Yes, several did tell times. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. In fact, I brought notes today with the, the damn vinyl stuck to the paper I know, it was because so funny. I was weeding the vinyl. <laughs> ah, you'll find it stuck. I had it stuck to the bottom of my foot the other night. You've been really creative with that lately. I'm glad you finally got it figured out. I have. So. It's great. It's a total time suck, but it's fun. It is, Everything so. is a time suck. It is. Let's just be honest. Let's Except just, for eating. Eating's not a time suck. 
Eating's fun. Eating is so fun. I'm so, yeah, I'm ready to eat now. <laughs> I See, know. before we sat I down, can hear. before we sat down, I was this far from eating, and now, and now I'm we're... like this far from eating. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> when we started recording, she's like, we got to start because I'm still this far from eating. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. Well, today we're going to talk about... um, 50s Housewives. Yeah. And Housewives Now. Like, it's the June Cleaver versus the Frankie Heck. Which one do you identify with? And in case you don't know who Frankie Heck is, uh, The Middle. The the show on ABC. She's great. If you've ever watched it. You know, she's a little bit of a hot mess. She's a little bit selfish, but she loves her family. Her house is always a disaster. They don't have top-of-the-line stuff. She works outside the home. Their car has duct tape on it. Yeah, They're like pretty average America. Right. You know, to me anyway. She's a a really great example of... um, Reality. The mom from Malcolm in the Middle. Roseanne from... Roseanne. Right, Roseanne. (laughs) I mean, just that that, the not-so-perfect mom. Right, right. Whereas June Cleaver totally right was. oh like, yes oh my god really okay but yeah that woman wore pearls and heels hose every day i hate freaking hose i wore that shit in the 80s and i hated it things get hot when you wear a hose i don't like that i don't i don't like the way they feel yeah and you squat in them and then there's this weird like webbing between your legs and you're like what what the hell is it's that? in the crotch area you can call it the crotch area yeah, yeah no i was like i need a pair of scissors i slice it up the middle and then I can walk. I think that they sell them already done like that. Crushless but you have to pantyhose? But you have to buy them at a specialty store. What the shit would you want those for? Strippers? Yes, actually. Prostitutes. Yeah, yeah. Crushless pantyhose. But no, no if thanks. they fit your needs, then, you know. I think that's why you would just buy, like, fishnet. Like, like thigh highs. Yeah. Yeah. No thanks. I don't want any of that. You don't like my legs, then go suck it. I, I, have, a, I have a friend that works. You know, you don't hear women having to wear pantyhose a lot, but I have a friend that works in, in a financial institution. So they have they have a business code really? or dress code. So she does still have to, like, when she wears um, skirts or dresses, she has to wear hose. That is torture and should be illegal. I hate well, she them. loves her job, so she puts up with it. But I, hate I can you imagine? Like, I don't think no. I've I don't think I've worn pantyhose since the day I graduated from high school. I don't. I have, and I will tell you the last time I wore pantyhose, and I have a picture of it. Uh, my husband and I went to a wedding. It was actually Lloyd's cousin Christine, and I had on a black dress. This was in the early nineties, right? So it was still okay to wear black pantyhose. Oh my god. Do you remember the multiple colors? No. I wasn't, I wasn't that like cool. the navy blue and the lime the tights. green. Tights. Now we're tights. Right. Same area, okay. though. Like, yeah. Okay. But those these were true pantyhose. Right. They were black. And I remember my mom used to buy them in the eggs. Remember yes. Remember the eggs? Yes. The legs? Yeah. My mom actually worked in a bank when she was younger, and they had to wear pantyhose yes. under their pants. And so, yeah, you talk about... What would they whoosh, check? Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I don't know. I just think of, like, all that, like, swishing and yuck. I hate pantyhose. Well, My mom used to love pantyhose, didn't you, mom? <laughs> <laughs> I hate them. They're the worst. They're the devil. Yeah. But, yeah. So, there has been, and it comes around every once in a while, but there's always this thing on, um, mostly on Facebook that you see, like, this whole, um, from Good Housekeeping from the 50s, or one of those magazines oh, from the okay. 50s. So, they talk about, like, the 50s housewife. Um, how to be the best housewife you can be. It's interesting because we usually print out research material. Right. I don't think we, but I don't think we printed out the same thing this time. Woot, woot. What did you print out? I'll tell you in a minute. It's a super funny uh, Keeping article. Keeping your man happy. <laughs> From 50s the 50s. Styles. <laughs> so um, it's having dinner ready when they come home. And it, it, the funny thing is these are so... So, how to keep your man happy, too. Like, this entire list is all I about think, being happy towards I your I think making the your general happy. message from those days was... Was do what you need to do to yeah, keep your man happy. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, no shame in that. I've no, I mean, I like a happy man. I would have loved to have been a 50s housewife. I don't think I would have worn the heels and the hose and the dress. Do you think most dress did? Maybe. Or do you think that's just what I they like to... I love Lucy, man. I loved I love Lucy. I don't think she was your typical housewife, though. No, because she did wear pants. She was independent, and yeah. she did her own thing. Right, And she right. didn't listen to Desi. I think, yeah. Yeah, no, but so. she still kind of wore the, I think that was just indicative of the Well, time. you can wear those dresses if you want. I mean, honestly, they still sell them. No, no thanks. <laughs> I like my pants. I like my leggings. Sweet I like leggings. to breathe and eat without the, yeah. 
So let's see. So there's planning ahead and making sure you have a delicious hot meal because no man likes cold food. And we damn sure ain't microwaving it. Right. Mm-mm. They didn't have microwaves. No. So no. Um, prepare yourself. Take 15 minutes to rest so that you will be refreshed when he arrives. Amen, well, sister. That's not a problem. Joke's on you because I take a two-hour nap every day. <laughs> I am all refreshed. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> So, he has just been with a lot of work-weary people, and you need to be refreshed so that you may lift him and greet him with a smile. Did my husband write this article? (laughs) (laughs) Clear away the clutter. Make one last trip through the main part of the house just before your husband arrives. Gathering up children's books and toys, papers, etc. Run a dust cloth over the tables. Your husband will feel like he has reached a haven of rest and order, and it will give you a lift, too. I have a true confession. I used to do that. I do too. And Before I'll, I had I'll talk, kids. Well, when we get on ourselves, <laughs> and I'll tell you about this because I, I do have a thought process on the whole keeping the house clean thing. So, we'll get to that. Prepare the children. If they are small, wash their hands and faces and comb their hair. I don't think my kids comb their hair on a daily basis. No, mine don't either. Yeah. We don't have a brush. I mean, not just before daddy comes home. They sell brushes for kids? I I know, right? They are his little treasures, and he would like to see them playing the part. (laughs) However, minimize all noise, which means shut them up. So he wants to lock their asses in the closet or the window, and then he can just look through the closet at them. Hey, daddy. What's up? Because, you know, at nighttime, your house is very quiet, right? You don't have any yelling, running around, horse playing, that sort of thing. No, not at my house. Never. Ever. No one kicking a ball around? No. 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 Yeah. That does not happen at my house. My kids are angels. This one is my favorite. Do not greet him with problems or complaints. Don't complain if he is late for dinner, like if he's out <laughs> schlepping his secretary. Yeah. That one always, it made me think of uh, Mad Men. Mad because, Men. Yes. I love that. Because the men on that show were such dirty dogs. Yes. That, that's, yes. If he's late for dinner, then don't complain. <laughs> Count this as a minor problem compared to what he might have gone through throughout the day. Oh, Lord. This had to have been written by a man. Have a cool or warm drink ready for him. Have him lean back in a comfortable chair or suggest that he lie down in the bedroom. Let me guess, slippers and, and paper and a pipe are coming up. Arrange his pillow and offer to take off his shoes. Uh, take your own fucking shoes off. Oh, my God. I don't want to touch your nasty feet. I don't want to see uh, your nasty feet. Uh, I don't like feet. Uh, speaking of low They stink voice. after a man's been working all day. I know. Take them damn shoes off. Take them shoes off yourself. You may have a dozen things to tell him, but the moment of his arrival is not that time. Let him speak first. So don't ambush him at the door and say, get your ass in here and take care of these kids. I'm going to Walmart. Or the bookstore. Never complain if he doesn't take you to dinner or to other entertainment. Instead, try to understand that his world of strain and pressure and his need to unwind and relax. Who wrote this? I want to find him and knock him in the head. (laughs) We need to pummel him. So that the bomb is being a homemaker in the 50s meant caring for both your family and your house, as well as presenting yourself as picture perfect throughout the day. That means keep your shit together all day. So I think what we're wearing right now would not have been I wish you could see eye rolls acceptable. through the podcast. Because I think I just literally rolled my eye rolls so far back into yeah. my head that, that I could see my ponytail. So, and we already talked about like the, you know, the... Housewives today, for one thing, the majority of them have some sort of job. Mm-hmm. Wives of the world, we work. Even the, even the stay home moms, right? Work. We have commitments to other people. We're on committees. We volunteer. We hold part time side jobs. Right. You know, direct sales. We do all kinds of things. Versus back then. They didn't. Mm -hmm. They were expected to stay home and focus on making sure that the carpet had lines in it from the vacuum cleaner. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You'd be good at that. You like to vacuum. I do. I love a clean carpet. You do. So weird. Freakishly clean. So weird. It is weird. So I don't, I think I fall somewhere in the middle. I, I think I do too. I do. And here's the thing. I like having a clean house. Yeah, I do too. I kind of cringe when I see these whole, if my house is in a mess, then I, I'd rather have a messy house. You, or, yeah, like the, what's the saying? The little plaque that floats right. around. Of, I'm like, if you have a messy house, own that shit. But don't condescendingly tell me I must have nothing better to do because I like it clean. Yes. I, I like a clean about. house. And the thing is, is I have this commitment to my husband that he works outside the home. 
and I work at home. Mm-hmm. Part of what I can do. That's my job. I think of that. That's is my job. Cleaning the house. Okay. That being said, when my husband walks through the door, his job isn't done either. And that's coming from him, not from me. Mm-hmm. He helps me clean the house. He cooks dinner. He cleans up after dinner. He takes care of the kids. He takes them places. He's mm-hmm. not, you know, that it evens itself out. And I have these other commitments that I'm able to have because he does that. Mm-hmm. So this, this whole like, wow, he worked all day. So when he comes home, he should lay around while I take care of bullshit. Well, I think because you know what? you're a partner. Right. You're exactly. a partnership. Right. And I get it. You work hard. I mean, my husband travels too. And it's hard when he's home, but... I still do expect something from right, him. Right, Because these are your kids as well. This and, is your house as well. And I think it's easy for us because we have a husband that want to give that something. Mm-hmm. Want to spend time with the kids. Right. I don't care if you play with them. If right. that's what you want to do, if that's how you help me right. out is by playing with them, right. that's totally right. fine. You know? You know, but interacting yeah. with them, period. Right. You know, there are some men that don't interact with their children. Right. You know, Lloyd came up with the the whole ice cream thing. Yeah, the ice cream Sunday party. Was so cute. <laughs> he wanted invitations he was and like, everything. He's like, let's have a sugary filled fiesta right before bedtime. Right before bedtime. I but it was adorable. I, he even got upset with me because I went to the store to get groceries and uh-huh. he's telling me everything to get, right? And you didn't get it all? And I forgot the pineapple topping and the strawberry topping. Well, you know, they're so full of food cute. dye, so right. I kind of intentionally didn't. Right. I got home and he's like, well, where's this and this? And I'm like, oh. He's like, I'll be back. I'm right. going. So he went to the damn new H-E-B and, and got, got that on a Saturday so, evening. It's kind of cute. You have to admit. But that's yeah, no, I thought it was great. So, um, but yeah. And I think the thing for us is it's easy to have this outlook because we do have very supportive spouses. And that's, you know, it's ironic though, because we both have spouses that aren't here. Right. So, but when they are home and neither one of them, I think. I speak for you, too, when I say that, like, Matt would never walk in the door and be like, Jesus, this place is oh, a pigsty. Oh, no, never. Uh-uh. never. Never. We've been married for 20 years. And it has been May. pigsty on many oh, occasions. Oh, yeah, no, it's been the... flat out disgusting. Yeah, ours too. And we've been together since 93, and at no point in time ever in my marriage has my husband ever said, what have you done today? Yeah, no. Mine will say, what'd you do today? But in the vein that he's just curious and making no, conversation. I'm not, yeah, not, but I mean in the um, accusingly yes, way. Yes. Right, like yes. saying exactly what did you, did yes. you bother to do anything? Like you right. look like shit and the house looks even worse. I know, what so, did you do today? Because right. you obviously didn't clean. I didn't, and, I'll, and I would be like, well, I'll tell you what I didn't do. I didn't brush my teeth. And I, I'll tell you what I won't be doing tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I totally, right. yeah. I, I, so I, it helps to have that, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. And it's good because I, as much as I like a clean house, it doesn't I think happen. the reality of my life leads more toward Frankie Heck. Right. You know, my kids are all over the place. You know, my, I have the t- we call Aubrey Axel. So if you've ever yeah. seen the show, mom knows what I'm talking yeah. about. No, she totally She is. calls her Axel because Aubrey is the kid that will literally like, you know, he'll drink out of the milk yeah. jug and then just sit it no, down. No, she's a hot little mess. She is. Like, she's like... A female She's Axel. a good girl, as, yeah. as he was, too. But she's just a space she's a cadet, right, yeah. yeah. So I actually relate more to her, just because she's more like, you know, normal America. Right. You know? I think I don't have, and we don't My have My house doesn't pressure. look like that, thank goodness. <laughs> I was going to say, you don't and give I, yourself enough credit on it. And I'm not as a big of a job. hot mess as she is, no. but I err more on the side of her right. than I would on June Cleaver. I think it's finding that middle ground. I think I have too much of a mouth to be June Cleaver, and I don't mean that in a gross, like, sexual way. I mean, like, you know, I'm mouthy. How is that sexual? <laughs> because Do you think everything I think about has a perverted twist. It does. I, it I, does. My mind's always True in the story. gutter. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm, like, you know, I am not a woman. Like, I'm not a, you know, I'm not, I'm not a docile homemaker. How about no. that? That's about the nicest way I can put it. Right. <laughs> I will say I don't think that there's anything wrong with that as long as you're not being demeaned. Yes, correct. But you'll. Yeah. I don't. As as in the, on the same I'm side a of that. Fire. I don't think there's anything That's wrong with women that go and work fifty hours a week and have someone that takes care of their house for them and cooks or for them or whatever. Honey, if I work fifty hours a week, I damn sure have somebody do all that other stuff for me. I Absolutely. don't think either one is wrong. Right. As long as you're being respected mm-hmm. and not demeaned by anybody in your life, you know, if, right. if you're happy. No. And being treated as a human being, I'm good with whatever your decision yeah, is. So, no. But I definitely am in the middle. I'm so. a spitfire. Right. Yeah. I'm not June Cleaver. <laughs> no. I bet she had a little feist in her, too, though. 
I bet she got pissed off and snatched those pearls off when she went in the bedroom at night and said, Damn it, I am not wearing these pearls again. He wants me, he wants me to take his stinky shoes off his She'll stinky take damn his feet. shoes off when he gets home. Offer to remove his shoes. What the hell? And then they want you to touch them. No. Is that for real? Did that like yes, happen? Yes. Yes. My husband sometimes will say, rub my feet. And I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh, no. I don't like feet. If Matt wants me to rub his feet, then he has to agree to get a pedicure with me. I always try to get him to get a pedicure with me. <laughs> and you think that's weird, but every time I go, there's always a couple there. Really? And they're both getting a pedicure. I'm like, that's lovely. I have a friend. And um, then his feet is all nice and soft. I always try to get Matt to do it, and he won't do it. He doesn't want, he doesn't like people touching his feet. I love having a pedicure. I do. I do, too. I do. And I've just recently. That's what we need to start doing our meetings over pedicures. There we yeah. go. When, like, when, like, when? We would, like we would get a lot accomplished that way. We no, would just I'd rather the food meetings. They're better. <laughs> they are delicious. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, um, do you want to you hear the little article? That yes, I, I would love to. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it was called Seven Tips for Keeping Your Man, and it was from the 1950s. Actually, it was in 1940, in the 1943 book Sex Today in Wedded Life. Um, these are pretty much similar, but the funny things come next. Um, this is don't bother your husband with petty troubles and complaints. Right. Um, be a good listener. Tell him, let him tell you his troubles. Yours will seem trivial in comparison. Was that yours? It's, it's somewhere Seven. the same. Yeah. Remember, Which I would just kind of want to say, fuck you. Like my, yeah. my stuff is not less important than yours. We are equal here. Right. Bitches. <laughs> Remember, your most important job is to build up and maintain his ego, which gets bruised plenty in the business world. Morale is a woman's business. Wah, wah, wah. Let him relax. I wish they could just see the hand motion he just did. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder that chair stained. It went with the noise I made. <laughs> <laughs> it's tears of it, yeah. Let him relax before dinner. Discuss family problems after the inner man has been satisfied. Jesus, oh, Mary, mother. What? I don't, yeah. What yeah. about the inner woman? I, I, that's why I don't get that about bitch, these. She just gets shut in the closet. Just forget her. Give me your pearls before you get in the closet so they don't get dirty, but get in the closet. Um, <laughs> Okay, in the 1951 book called Sex, Satisfaction, and Happy Marriage, this was written by a reverend. He says, do not ask for things. This is called nagging. <laughs> hey. But this, this one was, number one thing was, don't talk. Number two says, bad cooking will drive your man to seedy saloons. What? If your turkey tastes like wet toilet paper stuffed inside a burnt basketball, have you no pride? Oh, you had a late shift at the hospital and then went straight to Timmy's intervention? No excuses. <laughs> Why does Timmy need an intervention? I don't know. She was being funny. <laughs> but uh, number three says, oh, this says, if you didn't want your husband to become a syphilitic alcoholic, you should have learned to make a damn pot roast properly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three says, be the hot steak, not the cheap pork. <laughs> okay. I'm a prime rib, bitch. Yeah, I know. Fuck, I'm filet mignon. I'm little, right? I'm mm, short. I do love filet mignon. I don't, so. So good. Uh, number four was don't be a sexual vampire or a frigid fanny. <laughs> hey, according to that. So what uh, does that, that mean? Like lay on the bottom but move every once in a while? According to Queen, uh, fanny was pretty hot. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know who this frigid fanny they speak of is. <laughs> Look, he says, just as the vampire sucks the blood of its victims in their sleep while they're alive, so does the woman vampire suck the life and exhaust the vitality of her male partner. He is a winner. Let's see, there were two more. There were two. Whoever this man was with is one lucky lady. I know, right? He probably ended up in the closet. <laughs> eh, let's see. Uh... Let him have a little fun now and then. What if your man strays after marriage? He says, ultimately. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Get over it. Pretty much. He says, get over it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yes. You mean the marriage where literally the vows say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, just. Oh. Oh, just wait. This is the last one. This is the best one. Your husband is the boss of you. Mm. The boss of you. I'm curious what our husbands would have to say about that line. We should ask them. My husband would be funny and say, you damn right. And I'd be like, you. And he would say that as he kind of like. Yes. Flinched. Because he knew. <laughs> he knew. You better run. He, he, he'd run and then say it. Run, mofo. Run. You best run. 
You may be tiny, but you're fierce. <laughs> I am quick. I am tiny and quick. Your legs are little, but they move quickly. <laughs> That's some crazy shit. I'm not kidding That's you. That's insane. Like, seriously. I'm, I'm, after seeing all this, I'm slightly glad that I was not a 50s housewife. I would have been that crazy bitch they put on TV and said, don't be this housewife. Right. Yeah, no, we'd be the ones that <laughs> I, yeah. I would have been the one with the match in the background of the house burning down. It would have been me. Like, yeah. And see, that's where I'm like... You didn't like my pot roast, and you wanted me to wear pearls? Right. <laughs> and you want me to look the other way when you're tapping your secretary. Yeah, yeah. as I take your socks off your stinky ass right. feet. No. Next. See, there's part of us where I do think... Well... I think it's okay to want to keep a clean house as, yeah. as a woman. Like, say, you know, well, it's important like said, to me. It's, it's, right. I consider that I my like job. I like taking care of it. This is what I've chosen to do. I could easily go out. But this is what I've chosen to do, and I don't mind doing that. And is it going to be perfect every time he – let's assuming that my husband comes home every night, which he doesn't. He barely comes home every month. But assuming that he came home every night, would the house be clean every night? No. no. But no. I would try to make an effort because right. I know it's nice. I like going to bed knowing that the house is straightened up. Mm-hmm. So that it has just as much to do with my comfort as it does somebody else's. Right. There is no way in hell – that I would ever allow someone else to be the boss of me. And there's no way that I would ever allow someone's needs to be more important than mine. Right. We're even. With probably the exception of my kids. Because mm-hmm. their little scrawny asses are always going to come first. I mean, my beautiful snowflakes. <laughs> and there's no way that you would ever catch me looking the other direction. Yeah. I, you know. And that's not saying I can't say for what I would do. Because I don't know what I would do. But I would never be like, whoa. I wouldn't well, allow it. I think, and that's what he's encouraging you. Well, to do. and I think no, I think it's the nonchalant attitude right. that this is totally acceptable. Right. And guess what? Suck it up, Buttercup. Right. No, no. absolutely not. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. I, I, you know, I don't. I. It makes you wonder, like, how did it ever get to that point where, like, all of these rules, like, that was, like, what? The funny thing is, is I can pretty much guarantee that most households were not like this. Mm-hmm. Like. I'm sure that, the, well, I, I'm they more like Ted Bundy's household or something. Like, I don't even know where you're going with that. But <laughs> n- not every man in the 50s cheated on his wife. Right. Not every man in the 50s expected the house spotless when he came home right, and wanted right. her to rub his this feet. This was the ideal. That was the ideal Guidelines. situation, yeah, right. you know. So this is not the reality for the majority of the people. But the fact that it was out there and this is, and if this was your case, then you should just take it. How miserable, how miserable that must have been. I just find it funny that these were actually, like, published books. Right. Like, this stuff was, like, you know. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I wonder if nowadays, if someone wrote a book similar to this, like, would the publisher say, this is not going to sell. People are right. not going to like this. You know what I mean? But back then, it was perfectly acceptable. Right. You know? Yeah, times have definitely changed. Definitely changed. There's a huge difference between June Cleaver and today's housewife. So, uh, But, yeah, I agree. I, I want my house to be clean, but... It doesn't. I don't beat myself right. up if, if it's and not. And it's it's more or less for me more than I mean. Yeah. Like I don't mind it being clean for everyone else too, but I I keep it clean because I'm less stressed when it's clean. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. But, but I'm also that being said, I'm in a marriage where my husband would never come home and say, "Why isn't this done?" Very so, true. Very true. He's generally very grateful for anything that I do. Yeah. Well, in fact, mine will tell me to sit down and stop cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, can you just come sit down right. over can here, please? Right. Can you relax? Right. I'm come like, sit with me. Let's talk. And then my eye twitches as right. I leave the dishes in the sink. Because you know that there's stuff like, okay, in there. like, okay, if I don't do it, no one else is going to do it. Right. So, yeah. I think I teach the kids how to do dishes so I don't have to anymore. I might know how to load a dishwasher, but getting them to do it is a whole The problem story. is, mine will help, but I have, and Matt laughs at me because I'm even like this with him, like, it just has to be a certain way to be the most efficient, and I have a hard time. Oh, you're one of those. Not with everything, but the dishwasher. dishwasher. Look, it, it's not the best dishwasher out there, so you need to, A, rinse that crap off. Oh, I don't rinse. But mine is a crappy dishwasher. Yes, I get Yeah, I get So get if you don't rinse, you're just cleaning it again. Yeah. There's a certain way to put things in the dishwasher. <laughs> Stop laughing Not willy-nilly. I just no. willy-nilly. You cannot willy She's nilly. my best friend. Can you know how inefficient that is? No, I don't because my shit comes out clean. <laughs> 
If it doesn't, I just stick it back in there. I have a spoon that I have been putting back in my dishwasher basket for about two months now. Why don't you just hand wash that? I don't want to. I'll show it to you. I'll take a picture and send it to you. I am not. I'm hoping that when my mom comes, she'll, she'll wash the it. spoon. I'll come over this afternoon and wash <laughs> it for you. I'm so serious. I'd throw it in the garbage if it wasn't one of my good spoons. <laughs> I am so serious when I say that. <laughs> I'm like, you bet you're never going to get clean. You're going to get clean one right. of these days. This is going to work. It's going to work. If you put it in there properly like it should go it's and everything the only, else. It's the only asshole who ever came out of my dishwasher that wasn't clean. I think it's just being a dick and you should So guess what? It. That's why it keeps going right. in there. Don't tempt me. I will toss it. You it's should. one of my wedding ones. I don't want to. Like, if it was one of my crappy ones that I right. got, like, hand-me-down, absolutely. That bitch would have been in the garbage can after the second time. Or... Wash it? No. Just just throwing this out there, you could hand wash no, it. No, that ain't happening. <laughs> Which would have basically taken less time than what you've spent. I just keep putting it right back in. <laughs> I look at it and I think, I don't know what's on it. Like at this point, the heat's so God high knows, in the dishwasher, right. it's like cement on that spoon. It's not I'm coming not off. Kidding. It's not coming it's off. It's not. I'm going to give you that spoon to eat with when you come to my house next time. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, well, make sure after you've listened to this, you go online and let us know what kind of housewife you think you might be. Yes. Which way do you lean? Are you June Cleaver or Frankie Heck? Or a little bit in the middle? I think we're both in the or middle. Or neither. Are you like like Charles Manson's wife or something? I don't know. Did he have a wife? I don't think he had a wife then. <laughs> he had, like, Girlfriends. followers. Yeah. But he, wasn't he engaged a couple of years ago? I don't know. Like one of those creepy ass prison Jail fanatic wives, yeah. things. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah. I vaguely remember that. I think so. So there's somebody for everybody. That's right. And there's a housewife for everybody. So if Charles Manson get a good a fiance in jail, then there's somebody for everybody. There's hope for everybody. Right. Yes. So let us know what kind of housewife you are. Yes. <laughs> and then while you're online, make sure you check out our own blogs, One Fed Up Mommy and Never Drink From Mommy's Cup. And what else? I think that's it. Okay. I think. You know, I, I wanted to um, drop a little hint. Please do. For the surprise that we, we've we yes. been chatting yes. about um, doing a not a live episode per se. I mean, it could be, but that's kind of scary. We'll have to talk about logistics with that. Yes. Yeah. But we want to do um, a video episode because we thought it'd be really funny. Um, but also the podcast. Like, right. you'd have both if you wanted both um, of us cooking in the kitchen. Right. So, um, so yeah. Send us, um, tell us what you think we should cook. And it can't be easy. We wanted to make it hard yeah. so that we look like a bunch of damn idiots in the kitchen. Because we're fairly, both of us are pretty accomplished cooks. So, it needs to be something difficult. We want to so. be, yeah. We want to make it really hard so we look like the idiots that right. we really are. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> like something that you light on fire with like a match or something. Like a souffle or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that weird meringue thing that looks like a big like chef hat or something. Yes. Yes. Anything. Beef Wellington. Is that complicated? It sounds complicated. Nothing that takes like four hours to cook, though. It has to be like, you know, within an hour's time. Yeah. Start to finish. Yeah. Absolutely. We can edit. Even yeah. if it takes longer. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, I know, right? Ooh, I'm so excited. You this forget is about be that funny. part. <laughs> I do. Sorry. Uh, All right. Well, other than that, we hope you have a great week, and we'll see you back next week for what comes up next. Let's see. Next week. Uh, la 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 la. Elmo's world. Uh, number twenty three. Age, age is, is only, only a number. number. Yep. That's a great one. Yeah. So. So is age right. really only a number? So we'll find out. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.